this video, we are going to take a look at graphing logarithms. Um, we have another video that goes over introduction to logarithms and some basic properties and some um, solving some basic equations with logarithms. So you might want to take a look at that first. Um, I did, for reference, uh, restate the definition of a logarithm right up here at the top. Uh, this is something you need to be familiar with when working with logarithms. We have the logarithmic form and the exponential form. And uh, the parameters we have there, the base, b, in either form, that's a positive real number that's not equal to 1. The x, which is the argument of the logarithm, that's going to be uh, greater than 0. We can't take the log of 0, and we can't take the log of a negative number, only positive numbers. And y, the um, exponent or the result, is going to be uh, any real number. So we are just going to jump right in and start graphing these. I will warn you that my graphing skills with this little tablet aren't great, so uh, just kind of bear with me and use your imagination a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I think the easiest technique to use when graphing a logarithm is to rewrite it into exponential form. Remember, f of x is just another name for y, so this could say y equals log base 2 of x. That's our logarithm form. If we turn this into its exponential form, we take the base 2. We raise it to the power y, that's our exponent, and we set it equal to the argument, which is x. And this form we can now use to make a table. It's a little bit different than when we usually make a table because um, this equation that we have up here is solved for x. So rather than choosing values for x and calculating y, we are actually going to do the opposite. We are going to choose some values for y and calculate what our x is. Okay, if y is negative 2, that means x would be 2 to the negative 2. Negative turns it into the negative exponent turns it into a fraction and we square it, so it becomes 1 fourth. Uh, when y is negative 1, x is 2 to the negative 1. That would be 1 half. When x is 0, y to the 2 to the 0, sorry, when y is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. When y is 1, we get 2. And when y is 2, 2 squared gives us 4. So there is our table of points. And we'll go ahead over here and plot those. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make this bigger. Um, so when x equals 1 fourth, y equals negative 2. And you just kind of have to approximate. I know 1 fourth is hard to hit on a graph. Um, when x is 1 half, y is negative 1, about there. When x is 1, y is 0, about right there. When x is 2, y is 1. And when x is 4, y is 2. Okay, you connect these with a nice smooth curve, or as smooth as you can get it. And if we plotted more points, you would see this would get closer and closer and closer to that y-axis, but it would never cross it. So what that means, see that might look familiar from our graphing of exponentials. Um, we are going to have an asymptote here. For logarithms, we have a vertical asymptote. And in this case, it's going to be at x equals 0. And we can now see from looking at our picture, domain. Remember domain is uh, the list of possible x values. So we're looking at our x-axis here. And notice there's nothing over here on this graph. When we graph a logarithm, there are no negative x values. So the domain of x we see um, doesn't ever hit 0, but it's anything greater than 0. So that's where we get our domain. And our range, range would be the y values. And you can see it continues on down, and it continues on up. So our range is going to be all real numbers for y. Um, I do want to take a minute to look at the relationship between an exponential function and a logarithmic function. So I'm going to add to this graph that we have up here. Remember this one that we have in black. This is um, our log function, and it's log base 2. And I want to compare that. We're going to actually just sketch in here. Uh, let's call it g of x, since we already used f of x. 2 to the x power. That's an exponential function because the x um, is in the exponent. And we can make a quick little t table for that. And you might notice it looking pretty familiar. This is more traditional since we've solved for y. 
Uh, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. And let's plot those points. x equals negative 2, y equals 1 fourth. Again, just get it as close as you can. x equals negative 1, y equals 1 half. x equals 0, y equals 1 x equals 1, y equals 2, x equals 2, y equals 4. I'm going to connect those with a smooth curve. And if you remember, for our exponential functions, we have a horizontal asymptote. And what we see here is that these two functions are actually inverses of each other. Okay, we can see that in a couple different ways. Um, inverses are always symmetrical with respect to the line x equals y. That's what I'm dashing in here. Notice they are just reflections of each other over that line. And the other thing we can notice when we look at our two t tables, they are actually the same with the column split. The x values become the y values and vice versa. Okay, so that's how we can see that these two are um, inverses of each other. Okay, the other thing we're going to do in this video is just uh, look at, review our transformations. We're going to graph a whole bunch of different logarithms and look at the, all the different transformations and what happens to our graph. So it might be helpful to review the transformations. We're going to start off by just graphing this uh, first function, log base 3 of x. Again, we might want to rewrite that as 3 to the power of y equals x. I'm going to use the same y values as before. Uh, 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the first is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So this is going to look really similar to the graph we just did, log base 2. Um, we're going to get 1 ninth negative 2, 1 third negative 1, 1 0, 3 1, and 9 2. And connect those with a nice smooth curve. It's just a little steeper. That's what the larger base does for us. And don't forget, every time we graph a, graph a logarithm, you want to dash in that asymptote. And that's an important part of the graph. And this asymptote here, this is at x equals 0. Okay, so we're going to use this one, this first f of x, if I can label it here. That's going to be our parent function. And now we're going to look through some transformations and see what we can do. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so next up, g of x. So this is just a transformation of our parent function. We have a minus 2. Since that minus 2 is inside the argument of the logarithm, that means it is going to be a horizontal transformation. Anything that's inside the function, or in this case, inside the argument of the log, that's a horizontal. Since adding or subtracting a constant is always a shift. So this is going to be a horizontal shift. And negative 2, remember those horizontals, they kind of go in the opposite direction you think they should, uh, negative 2 is actually a shift to the right by 2. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take the points from our parent function and just shift each one to the right. It's also going to help if we sketch in that new asymptote. The asymptote is also going to shift two units to the right. There's our new asymptote at x equals 2. Uh, here, this point right here that used to be at 1 is going to shift over, and now it's going to be at x equals 3. This point that used to be at 3 is going to shift over by 2 units. It's now going to be at 5. This one that was at 9 is going to shift off the edge of our graph, but it would now be over there at 11. And then we have our two fractional points down here. Connect those with a nice smooth curve. And there is our g of x function. Notice that if I drew them perfectly, you would see they have the same shape. Everything's just scooted over two units to the right. Uh, next up, we have a negative sign. Negative signs are always reflections. 
Um, again, since it's inside the argument, inside the function, it is going to be a horizontal change, and a negative is a reflect. And a horizontal reflection, that means side to side, and that means it's going to be over the y-axis. So we can draw that in. Again, the black uh, line, that's our parent function. Uh, when we reflect over the um, y-axis, that asymptote is not going to change, so we are still going to have an asymptote at x equals 0. Uh, this point, our intercept that used to be at 1, is now going to be at negative 1. Our next point that used to be at positive 3 is now going to be at negative 3. And that point that was at positive 9 is now going to be at negative 9. And we can fill in those fractions too. This one was 1 third, it will now be negative 1 third, negative 1 ninth. Connect those with our nice smooth curve. Again, a little messy, but you get the idea. And there is our function h of x. Because my drawing is not that great, I did want to just go ahead and show you what that looks like. Um, here's uh, these functions entered in Desmos. In black, there's our original function, log base 3. And then our next one, we did a horizontal shift to units to the right. And that's the blue one. That's what that's going to look like. They have same shape, same curve, just everything scoops over. And then our final one was a reflection, and it's going to have that same asymptote, and it just looks the exact same as that black um, one that we first drew, just flips over the y-axis. Okay, let's look at, at another set. Okay, I already drew in here the log base 3. That's This is the same t-table we just did in the last one. I just sketched it in in advance, so we'll be ready to go. So we're going to start right here with this function i of x. Okay. Let's look at the transformation that we have here. We have a plus 5, and this time it's not in the argument of the logarithm. It's outside, outside of the function. Anything that's outside of the function is a vertical. Um, when we add or subtract a constant, that is a shift. And verticals are nice. They go just the way they think you should. Plus 5 means it goes up 5 units. Um, notice that that won't change our asymptote. Okay, This is a vertical line, so when we move it up by 5, it's still just a vertical line. But each one of these points, one, two, three, four, five, moves up five units. So there was our intercept. This one was at one, so it's now going to be at six. This one was at two, so it's now going to be at seven. This one was at negative one, so it is now going to be at four. That's four, one third, and four, and then one ninth and three. Okay, so there's what our logarithmic function looks like. If we just shift it up five units. And then this next one, another negative sign. This time the negative is not inside the argument, it's outside, outside of our function, so that means it's going to be a vertical change. A negative sign is always a reflection. Okay, a vertical reflection, that means it's going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so the black one is our uh, parent function again. When we're right here on the x-axis, that point's not going to change. That intercept is going to stay just the same. Uh, this next point used to be one unit above the x-axis. Now it's going to be one unit below. Our next point used to be two units above. Now it's going to be two units below. This point that we had at x equals one-third was one unit below. Now it's going to be one unit above. And you can connect those points with the smooth curve and this one, but you get the idea. And that's what j of x is going to look like, our reflected function. Again, I'll show you a prettier picture. Um, here we go. Here's our next one. There's our parent function again with our vertical asymptote. When we move it up by 5, the asymptote doesn't change. The vertical line stays the same when we shift it up by 5. And when we reflect it over the x-axis, again, that vertical asymptote still didn't change. And we get the reflection that's the green one. Okay, and then just one more step. This is the last batch. Again, I went ahead and drew in that parent function. I just like to see it on the graph when I'm doing these transformations. And for our first one here, plus 3, 
That plus three is inside the argument of the function. Anything inside is a horizontal change. Plus three is going to be a shift. And that's going to be to the left by three. So this time, a horizontal shift, that is going to change our asymptote. So it's going to move three units to the left. So where our asymptote used to be at zero, it's now going to be at x equals negative three. And then we take every point and move it three units to the left. And connect those with a nice smooth curve. And it would look something like that. That would be k of x. And for our last one, this time we have, um, we're multiplying by a value. It is outside, it's not inside the argument, it's outside the argument, so that means it's going to be a vertical change. Um, multiplying is always a stretch or a compress. Um, and when it's vertical, if we multiply, that's going to be a vertical a stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so um, our asymptote's at zero. When we uh, multiply that, it doesn't change at all. It stays right there at zero. Uh, our intercept right here, the y value of that is zero. So when we multiply by two, that stays. Uh, this next point has a y value of one. One times two is two, so it moves up to there. Our next point has a y value of two. Two times two is four, so it stretches up to there. Uh, our y value here was, this was the point one third, negative one. Negative one times two is negative two, so it moves to there. And this one was one ninth, negative two. So negative two times two is negative four, stretches down to here. So let's connect these with a nice smooth curve. And that is our logarithm stretched by a factor of two. And then I'll just show you the pretty picture of those. Also, um, here is our, again, our parent function. If we move that to the left by three, again, that shifts the asymptote and the curve over by three units. Or if we multiply it by two, it is a um, vertical stretch. And the green graph shows us what that looks like. And so that's it for graphing with logarithms.